So it's not the same way I just came out very much. <coughs> Spider Queen, you just stay there, madam. You just stay there. being hit what are they being hit by Ready, watcher. Kind of stuck over here. Chris! My mind feels sharp as steel. Oh. Right. 
Right, well, let's just uh, heal up, shall we? So Really means it's an important story or something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't really know. Well, someone's a mess eater. Yeah, that again. <clears throat> As you advance into the darkness, the ground begins to tremble. You hear plodding footfalls, groan brief, groan breaths, and bone snapping crunches. An ogre steps out of the shadow, shadows, ten feet tall and bulging with muscle. He tears a mouthful from a hoofed pink fleshed limb and tosses that aside. He watches you from under the thick rig of his brows. Too well equipped to be a villager, a bandit from the road then? Must be. The ogre snorts and tightens and grip around the club. I've kept to myself, killed no one but the fools reckless enough to chase me down here. Why have you come looking for me? Uh, I'm looking for a... Looking for a young elf in living. She's gone missing. Snarls really loud loud loud. I've done my best to avoid Kiff, especially the kind that might give rise to search parties. He scratches his knuckles and eyes. She never came here, of that I'm sure. Then I'll look elsewhere. First I want to ask you something more. Uh, speak fast. Then I should have eaten the blazing farmer. I understand the love of these villagers. Have with her swing. Calm down, so it could tell me something else. What are you doing in the cave? <clears throat> Hiding from your kind. Kiff driven from their homes by strange st storms. Bandits out for blood and coin. My kind is unsafe around Kiff at the best of times, but now tempers run hot and ogre blocked is valued among the alchemists. Uh... The only reason you hold up in a spider infested case is you really feared something out there? I told you, the kiff on the road these days hunger for anything they can eat or sell. I wouldn't last a week wandering the open, not by myself. He clutches his club with both hands and draws it closer. Not that this matter is you. Not that this matters to you. Now that you found me here, I can I can't let you leave. Uh, You don't need to stay in a miserable cave. I'm sure a big strong ogre like you would have no problem out in the woods. Please this club of a groaning crack place. I don't need you to remind me of how sorry my lot is. He looks down at you as, to, as he lifts his club. And this is... And if this is your way of chasing me out... No, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, mate. <clears throat> How may I help? Yeah. 
So the lady isn't there. <clears throat> Good. Actually get this done at some point. I have to admit, I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I'll admit, I really didn't want to do that because I believe you could have, I could have uh, talked him out of that. Oh well, <clears throat> I thought my diplomatic charm would help, mm -hmm. but uh, apparently it didn't. So she isn't here. Then. I still think she must be down there. She she has to be. <clears throat> As in, she's with the uh, the uh, the Tanner place. I assume that she must be there. So. That'll be that key for that place then, eh? The note is blood-stained and torn, and the edges are smudged with some kind of pigment. From the scrapes that are legible, you made out hastily written instructions. To avoid the entrance in the tower, traffic through my shop. Would I, I would attract the attention. Rifford may be sympathetic to our goals, but that wouldn't improve of a temple. Yet, key to the entrance by the river east of the town, but be careful of the road. Get up. Yeah. Margrin's fire casts light. I think well, I'll tell you what, we'll just go up and speak to Edir. So this is the uh wyvern. Fire damage. Fire! Way back here again. Fancy. 
turns to face you, wiping burn from his stock. His knit brows betrayed a moment of confusion, but as he watches you, a slow, confident smile creeps off his face. The iron brand does not meet many travellers this far from the road. What would they be doing here? Another man cocks his head at Tiller, probably after the dragon he ended. Same as us, boss. Dwarf curses and spits into the ground. It's a rhetorical question, you dumbwit. He tightens his grip on his sword. Everyone knows the roads between the villages are crawling with brigands. They're obviously bandits, same as us. Surely we can divide the spoil somehow. Nah, that's not going to work, that way. Kinda yes, but no. Uh, what do you want with a dragon head? To sell it, of course. If I wanted to eat it, I would have grabbed some pigs from the farm in Deerwood. Let's make a deal. You walk away, and I'll pay you the X value. Nope. They're round and large, and they come from dragons and drakes. How else do you want to go? Uh, Just leave your coppers in. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna hurt. Okay, caught a thirst blight. Boss, I don't think we're gonna. Not going for it. It was a fair try. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay, let's go Sure. Wait, <laughs> wait. Hey. Maybe back there. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, if her face is blackened and melted like candle wax, there's a small outcropping overhead with what appears to be a crude nest. Looks like a challenging crime. You slowly ascend the cliff, taking advantage of crevices and spurs in the rock, and reach the nest. This is sounded by, by glowing embers, twigs and bones litter the area. An egg the size of a small keg is nestled among the detritus. It looks heavy and awkward to carry. Do the egg with open water. You load the egg with slow, steady motions. Once the prize has reached the bottom and settled into the dirt, 
you safely climb down the cliff. Yeah. I'll see what I can find. <clears throat> I was expecting something worse. You're mine now. <clears throat> it does last a long time, which is cool. Huh. All right, let's see what he. This is the place, my big brother's last battle. I wish I could tell you what we're looking for. Find it. Anything from that battle, I guess. Whatever 15 years of rain hasn't buried. <clears throat> you see my brother's ghost, you give me a holler, all right? Well, give me a holler. This is says don't come here. It's basically he bears teeth that have been filled to fine bone. Back to your village, Estamore. You're lucky the three tusks still can hunt other quarry tonight. I'm looking for a group of people who may have already entered the room. So are we. He runs his thumb along the smooth wood of his spear. That's why we wait here. Estimor, and that is why I have decided to let you leave in peace. What will you do? The enemy- The individuals are my enemies too. If you let me in, I can bring them out for you. I like even more Estimor's to trample sacred ground. Certainly not. I see the famed mathematical aptitudes of the Grafafans were not overestimated. What will you do? We will wait. If they are inside, they must come out. And when they do, he slides a finger along the point of a spear and shows you a drop of the blood. Okay, so what do you know about the Cernu Relic? It's a sacred place of the boulders, and neither your feet nor ours shall sully the stones. The grasses, however, he grins and hefts his spear. I will gladly water it with your blood. Half the farmers grow too fearful to even mention our name. We are the fiercest of the six tribes of El Grafan, and we are the guardians of the monuments here. They are known by other names in the heathen tongue of farm folk. There are the ancients who build this place and many more like it. We are the six tribes who guard it. I don't want to have any beef with them, but right. if I have to, I will. Margrin's fire Not casts much light here. in dark places. <clears throat> <laughs> Too recent. I think I see. No, never mind. You see. Nothing over here. I guess they cleaned up real good after the battle. Well, this is embarrassing. Steady dust. 
does it. Yet he does it. Those face painters can't guard that place forever. These ruins are claimed, friend. On your way. No need to get riled, boys. We're just passing by. Look at his talisman, Pag. Aothasian. Uh, how about that? A godless sack of shit. We got a blazing corpse worshiper on our hands. On our hands. Actually, they never found the body. Only reason for the legacy is because the Duke doesn't got the guts to see you all slaughtered. The gods want you dead. Me and Pag, though, we've done our part during the purges, <clears throat> didn't we, Pag? Seamstresses? <laughs> Make your cracks now. Got no god or homeland to avenge you. By Magrin, this will be short work. It has nothing to do with gods, just ignorance. Doesn't matter who it was for anyway. Country's better for the purges. Maybe we start a new purge right here. Come and get me. Well done that. Surely you can go there. Guess not. They were right. That was short work. A tip of some metal object protrudes from around the watery river slit. With both hands, you and Edir begin digging in the mud until the object is dislodged. Close your hand around it and pull it from the wet earth. The object is steel, semi-circular frame, about the size of your fist, and even points around the semicircle. Jagged points just out like tongues of flames. The rays of a rising sun. At the sun's centre is a carved silhouette of a farless plant. I've seen these before. They top the standards of Ray at Ceres. Or did when Wyvern was alive. Well, it's something. Just not sure what it gets me. Well, we'll show it to the Graven Mother. Do you th what do you think can help us? Look, I appreciate you taking the in initiative, but I don't think there's much chance that this nice stranger lady happens to be a cipher. Uh, I will do what I can, but I will need the skill of a watcher to aid my own, to identify the soul once I have found the trace. Edir hands her the steel sun, the motion is mechanical, unconscious. Graven Mother takes the sun in one hand and yours in the other and you can feel her presence in your mind, her thoughts binding you to relax, focus. She says a word that reverberates as though an endless chasm. Your eye, close your eyes and concentrate, the sun is bright in your mind's eye, warm with the pulse of collective experience and noisy, and no, noisy with the thoughts of the past. The battle of faith of home. You drift from voice to voice through thought to thought. It hears so a vibrant signature with which to locate his brother. One's voice stands out amongst the dim, brassy and earnest, a shade brighter than it hears, but unmistakably of the same construction. You have no image of its owner, but this, his journey is imprinted within the points and curves of the steel sun, and in your mind it opens before you as a path stretching both southward to the gilded fail and northward over the uneven terrain that joins the Deerwood in the gap to Dacrin. Trace the path back to its origins, far back as you can find, gliding over pl plains and hillsides to a one-room home in gilded fail with a thatched roof and a dirt floor. The path is faint near, its distance in time rendering images blurry and detail scarce. From Guilty Fail, it follows the road towards Madrum Bridge, reaching the gates of Defiance Bay before diverting abundantly, cutting northward in a beeline for Rudacrian. The path leads to Rudacrian City, uh, regal and aust austere in the Adir Imperial style. 
It winds through streets and climbs a grand set of stairs into a stately building, passing through pointed archways into what appears to be a throne room. Upon the throne sits a man whose head is pure, blinding light, and as it, its gaze turns to you, the light drowns out all else. Its voice carries the force of thunder, but its words are impossible to make out in the imprint echoes of echoes. The voice and light fade, and the path bends backwards, carrying you along to a barracks, then back southward, marching into Deerwood and skirmishing along the way. Upon one battlefield, the imprint is fitted, and you see a Rukriatrian standard toppled with a steel sun, clutched in the hands of a fallen soldier. You see a young man in Vizgatian armour, with a deer straw coloured hat race towards the standard and lift it. The path you've been following clear to see beneath his feet, and as his hand brushes the steel tip, you can hear his thoughts racing in a blur, and they are of his good God and his country, and a brother he hopes is far away from this place. In an instant, the thoughts are gone as well as the man, and the standard is passed to another soldier. You pick the path up again as it's as it menders south and distant distant the greats in the shadow of Club and Rack. Open your Anything? Eyes. Looks like you were working real hard there. Hey, your brother got as far as Defiance Bay before turning to reactions said he met Wadewin there. And he enlisted. Well, what did he talk about with Wadewin? Hey, Wadewin said was a beam of light. I figured that. Loden and me had heard enough stories from his uprising to know it wasn't just some tall tale. Yeah, but again, this could just Doesn't be hard. Mean he was Aethys. It could have been some wizard's trick. It's what they talked about that's important. What'd they say? Uh -huh. That's not funny. Come on. That metal sun, my brother touched it. You saw where he went. Now what'd he talk about with Widewin? Why'd my brother fight for Raid Saris? I wish I had something better to tell you. <sighs> I guess that's it. We'll find some other way to know why he did what he did. I don't think we will. What will we do? Look for more war relics. We were lucky to find this one. The soldiers that fought with him are long dead. The battle was a massacre. Whatever Aethys knows, he's not talking to anyone. Not to wait around anymore. I got what I needed. If only they were words to fill such emptiness. Better yet, to remove his doubt, his question. I regret that my answers have only deepened his pain. 